Hello there everybody, this is Graham, also known as The Collector 75, and welcome to another Transformers knockoff review. As you can see, these are a set of KO Seacons. Uh, I was told about the site, I can't even pronounce it, is it Chim... 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 Oh, I can't fucking pronounce it. Chim... or something like that, dot com. Um, mainly because KO Toys have obviously stop doing KO Transformers and this was another site, uh, I believe it's in Asia as well, doing the same sort of thing. And so I had a quick look on there and I saw a few things I liked. So I saw these and I immediately wanted to pick them up and I believe I picked up the CHMS uh, Punch Counter Punch mainly because I just wanted something else to go with it really. These are quite cheap, I think these are about $25 or something like that plus about $15 for shipping which is um, all in all in with the punch counter punch. I think it cost me with the shipping sixty pounds, and I was quite prepared for that. So I thought, what the hell? Anyway, let's get on to this. So this is a KO set of Seacons. They do do another set, uh, which doesn't combine. I don't know why. Probably just doesn't come with the bits. Probably. Um, but I'll pick this one. Oh, I didn't actually realise at the time, though if I'd looked at certain pictures, I would have realised that Snap Trap here is actually slightly downsized. It doesn't make a lot of difference to the actual figure actually. When I first got it out I thought for fuck's sake. But um, you realise that to be honest at Piranacon their combined form is actually uh, a quite a squat thing so having him downsized doesn't really make a lot of difference. Right let's just go through the figures actually. We'll leave Snap Trap till last I think. We'll start here with um, Tentacle. As you can see these are pretty weird coloured and to be honest I'm gonna put loads of G2 Decepticon uh, symbols all over them. I, I've put a few on, I'm still waiting for another set to come from Repro Labels though when that will come is anybody's guess. Uh, anyway, but that's another story. Uh, so anyway, so eventually it will have a few. I've already got a few on it at the moment as you can see there's one there. That's for robot mode. Um, but this is a completely original sized um, the actual plastic quality is very well done. A lot of these parts on this have actually been retooled, and there is a good reason for that, actually. Um, he doesn't come with Piranacon's hands, this whole set, but makes up for it in another way. Also, you can store every piece for Piranacon on these figures, unlike the original G1s. So anyway, this is Tentacle. Um, as you can see, these arms are no longer pinned, I believe. I think they're pinned on the original one. But as you can see, these are just pushed in on that joint there, which, you know, is okay. Still comes with these guns that you can attach to the top of his head, and he's obviously some sort of um, um, a squid. Sorry about that. And he, he's all right, you know, his joints are fairly tight. Plastic quality isn't too bad. Anyway, right, let's transform this guy. We're going to take the weapons off. Just transform it quickly into robot mode. Had a few problems. I had to file down a little bit in there just so, as you can see, it's still pretty damn tight, but I couldn't even get it on there before, so I had to file that down. I had to tighten up one or two other little joints, but nothing major. So anyway, so we transform him like that. And there he is, and still a normal sort of sized robot. It's type Scramble City, is it, they called it, and the guns will easily fit in his hands, I hope. I think I actually tried that. And that is Tentacle. In robot mode, as you can see, they haven't put no paint apps on the head or nothing. I don't know if it's going to zoom in too well. Um, and also, this set, each figure has to go in a certain place for Piranacon. And there is good reason for that, because certain pieces have been moulded that way. So anyway, he becomes a foot now. So I'm going to transform him quickly. Isn't that hard, actually? And then we basically just fold these sort of back like that. Then with the guns we're going to combine them because they'll be needed later. If I can get the bloody things together. There we go. And set that aside. Here's going to become one foot over there. Uh, we'll start with the next foot which is going to be Scalor. Scalor again all the little figures are usual size. It's just snap trap that was slightly, slightly downsized. This is a, a faithful representation of his G1 self. Of course he comes now in orange and yellow and grey and blue. Uh, exactly the same really, apart from the legs aren't fixed on anymore, you can take them off if you want to for some reason, though I don't know why you would. Uh, I suppose you, these will come off as well, so you can give them a proper... Sorry. Oh, I must one. My camera's decided to move. I wonder what was going on there. 
Sorry about this, guys. One second. There we go. Hold on. Let me just make sure this doesn't move again. There we go. Sorry about that, everybody. Didn't even notice that. So anyway, so you can give them a sort of like a proper fish look. That doesn't connect into place, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to put the little appendages back on. There we are. And so he looks pretty much like his human self. Let's just take this fella quickly to robot mode, take the guns off, and need them later. Um, exactly the same transformation. Just close up that little mouth, extend the front, and just rotate this round. Flip that back. It's quite sturdy, so at least it will just stay there. Oh, yeah, move that so it goes a little bit further back. Try and get his little hands out there. I'll cut my nails lately, so that's not gonna, I'm not going to have too much joy there, I'm afraid. Try and use these guns. Get the fuck out of you fuckers. <laughs> oh, hang on a minute. I have no idea. Let me put that in there. There we go. That's, that's probably easier, isn't it? There we go. So anyway, so that's Scalor in robot mode. And as you can see, he's a little squat sort of robot, really. Um, to be honest, the Seacons aren't that bad, really, for what they are. They did improve a lot of, of the robot modes from the usual Scramble C. You've got the same sort of transformations as usual, but they look a little better. Um, let's have a look. His arms have been slightly retooled for this one. The originals are slightly thicker. They come out to about here. But other than that, again, no paint applications on the face or anything. But let's take this guy to his foot mode, because I want to try. I don't want to make this video too long if I can help it. Because I don't think it really needs to be that long, to be honest. Anyway, so there we go. He's now in foot mode, and what we do then with these guns, let me just sort of stand him up a little better. There we go. And then we connect the two guns. How do they go? That's it. Connect the two guns, then we take Tentacles guns, and then with the two ports, we're going to connect them two on there, because these guns do combine. If you can get them fuckers together. There we go. So anyway, so now we've got a four-barreled gun. I'm going to put that aside, and there's the two feet. Now we're going to come to this little fella, Nautilator. He is... Um, he's been slightly retooled. The arm, the, the orange little claws here have been slightly downsized. Uh, other than that, he's pretty much the same, really, for this mode anyway. Let me just... Uh, what is he? Some sort of um, lobster? Lobster-type thing? Crustacean? Uh, anyway, we're going to transform him. This transforms in exactly the same one, the same way as his G1 self. Take that little gun off. Open them out. Flip these all the way down to the back. And there we have Nautilator in robot mode. And you can take his little gun. If he wants to go in there. There we go. Pop that in there. And he is probably one of the worst out of all the... Scramble City because his head is so far back on his body. It's, um, it is a shame, to be honest. I was just wondering if they'd maybe changed it a little bit, but they haven't. So anyway, so there we go. That's not later in his robot. Mode. Probably one of the worst, if I'm honest. So let's take this fella to his arm mode. Uh, right, so what do we do? We take this fella up here. We take these claws off, which is kind of novel with some of these guys, because what you're supposed to do now is replace some of the components and put them other places. You can't do this on the original because the pegs on this uh, won't fit in the holes in his hands. That's probably why they downside these slightly. Uh, that now becomes up here and then you've got to try and get this little tab in here out which doesn't really want to come out too well. I don't think I've got anything that's going to get in there. Right, so I managed to go and get this so I can get this bloody thing out there we go just leave that out put that aside oh, I might need that again actually it's quite stiff in there so anyway so there we go and then now what we do is we're going to open out this little mouth this is actually going to come one of the hands so then he's got some sort of weird little claw hand uh, I don't know why they've done that I suppose I can't think we well, can't work it out really but anyway but that's going to become a hand so we're going to put him over there this gun will become in use later I'm going to put that aside we're going to come to the other arm. This is a jawbreaker or overbite. 
He has a very strange tail. This has been downsized from the original, and as you can see now, it doesn't really fit up against the body, which is a little bit of a shame. I put a nice big G2 Decepticon logo on him now. I think that looks quite cool on him there, actually. The arm, his arms have actually been remoulded, so they look completely sort of different now. He used to have two sort of prongs there, but now he's just got the one, uh, and he can fit his little gun under there. Again, you can take all these appendages off if you so wish to give them a proper shark look. Shame they didn't do that with the original ones because uh, in the comics that's how usually they appeared with no appendages or nothing. You, uh, you can open his little mouth if you wanted to. And he's quite a cool little shark. Uh, right, let's transform this guy quickly into robot mode. Again, much the same transformation as G1 counterpart. Just pop that down there. Flip that back. And this will rotate all the way back. They will come down, and that will form Jawbreaker's robot mode, and he's quite short, unfortunately. Yeah, I was thinking about painting some of the eyes and stuff, but don't know whether I will or not, but anyway, there we go. He does seem a lot shorter than his original G1 self, I'm not quite sure why, because uh, he looks like he's about the same sort of size. But he's alright for what he is. Right, let's transform this guy into the other hand. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to fold that down, because that's going to become a connector. That will rotate all the way back again. If I like to put that like that. Uh, these legs can go up here if you wanted to. Or you can put them anywhere else, really. That will flip back like that. You need to open this hand out now, I believe. And that's going to become a hand as well. Uh, but it will all become apparent a little bit later on. Uh, right, then we're going to come to this guy, which is C-Wing. Uh, again, you can take the appendages off. He's obviously a Stingray. I like the stickers he did come with. look like some weird tattoos. Uh, they've put extra holes. So you can actually put the weapons on top of his wings now. The wings are slightly downsized from uh, his original G1 release for some reason. Again, I can't work out why. Still comes with little holes underneath that you can attach the guns underneath if you wanted to. As you can see, he comes with the foot plate that you can now attach underneath him. Uh, we're going to remove that, and that will become a foot plate for one of the feet, obviously. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I like how they've done that, especially on Snap Trap, which we'll come to in a minute. Uh, right, so we're going to take these guns off. Uh, we're going to transform them very quickly into robot mode. Again, like so, just flip that back, flip the wings back, flip the hands down, and then you can hold the guns. I'm only going to put one in his hand. And again, unfortunately, this robot mode is a little bit shocking, unfortunately. Uh, some of them are pretty good in my eyes, but this one, along with possibly Nauta later, are the worst ones. Oh, pardon me. Right, so now this guy doesn't actually become part of... Piranacon, as you might expect. What we do is you've got a little tab just in there. So we're going to open that out, flip that down. We need to fold the arms back, rotate the hands back round. Sorry, hands, that your feet, I suppose, are robot legs, and really. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take this gun and we're just going to stick it in there. Pretty much like that, though you could also put it this way if you wanted to. And then we'll show you what we're going to do with that guy a bit later. I'm going to put him to the back for now. We're going to take with our foot plate, and then we're going to attach that under there. So there we've got him ready. Uh, the guns from C-Wing are going to come together. If you can get them together, a little bit fiddly to get together. Then on Nautilator, they are going to fit into this section up here with that little tab in there. It's going to come with a little bit of extra weaponry. Uh, right, so then with, I always forget his name, Jawbreaker, isn't it? This will now fit into that little tab in there, giving him a gun hand. Yes. Uh, right, so we're going to move on to Snap Trap, last of all. Uh, as you can see, he's been downsized. He's probably about half the size of his original self, but this will not make a difference to be honest, to his actual uh, combined form, which I will show you a bit later. Uh, again, he's some sort of turtle creature. The guns now don't move or nothing, they're just fixed, but then I always found that was a bit of a pointless gimmick anyway on the original. Uh, the sword will attach. It doesn't come with his other gun, 
Um, but as you can see on the back here, you've got the other foot plate which will fit under there, and they've found a place where you can store the, the um, Piranacon's head, which is really novel, because you can't do that on the original one. Um, but that's it. As usual, you've got all the same movement as the original. So anyway, we're going to take the little sword off, take the other foot plate off from under there. I'm going to put that straight away onto Scalor, like that, so we've got the feet ready. And then what we're going to do is just take this off, as you can see it's just tabbed under there, take the uh, Pranacon's head off, rotate these out, oh yeah, we've got to take this bloody thing off, I? this is his chest shield, which we'll come back to in a minute, put these on, rotate these up and round. Uh, when I first got this I could barely get one of these off, I had to, as you can see, I can't remember it is on this one, I had to file this sort of like tab down just to get it off and on, it's still pretty tight on there now, so that was handy, so I thought oh, no, I'll break the bloody thing. So anyway, we take the feet out and bring these down and around, flip these out, and as usual, there's the arms coming into play, they are quite stiff, close that up, bring that around and there's the head, again unpainted the head, which is a little bit of a shame, and then we can take the sword, you can hold the sword even though it don't look like it will fit in his hand, uh, and then you can take this. This just has now, instead of the strange um, scramble seat connectors on the original, just has a couple of pegs. Uh, and it does fit onto somewhere. I still remember getting it to fit. I can't remember how. Uh, is it that one? It is one of them. I know you get it to fit. Open these out. I've definitely got this to fit on him. I can't remember how now. Was it just that one you used to plug into there? Yeah. It does kind of fit in there, so you can have it like you had it as a shield. Um, but, there we go, if I just do a quick size, this is almost um, scale in robot mode, as you can see I just opened them out a little bit, and then he's almost now in size of all the rest of his little teammates. So now we're going to take this guy to Piranacon mode. Uh, this sword now becomes a, well, you can hold this in this hand, this is why it comes with a connector on the other side. That just goes straight in there, and now he's got his little sword for his hand. Uh, right, so here we go, we're going to transform this guy now. See how quickly I can do this. Here we go. Fold these out. Uh, right, now then, with these legs, we now have to move them down. We'll come to that in a minute. This chest shield will fit on. I like the grey colours. These are slightly loose. I had to tighten them up, but they're still not particularly tight, but tight enough. They now will fit into there. Pretty much, and he does have another peg actually just under there. That's the main one that you've got to try and get on. So then we've got him. I like to put them to an angle, sort of like that, really, because then they cover up a lot of stuff. Right, so then we've done that. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach some of the feet. Um, what I had to do is I had to drill out the holes um, with a drill bit, obviously, because when you put this on, I don't know the quality of the plastic, but it was so tight, I was so worried about just snapping the head off because I've had that happen on some KO figures before. So I thought, sod that, uh, that's what I was going to do. So that's what I did. And it worked pretty well because now I can get him all the way on and he'll still stay on there pretty tight, near enough. And at least now when I take him off, doesn't feel like I'm going to rip the bloody thing's head off. Well, I did the same sort of thing on this guy. If I just open that foot out, there we go. And you can see it just goes straight on there. Pretty much the same. And then we can sort of like stand him like so. With the feet on the back, you just sort of angle them down so they're not in the way of anything. Which is pretty cool. But because this guy is now downsized, it doesn't feel like he's particularly level for some reason. But that could be a number of reasons. It doesn't matter. Anyway, there we go, fuck it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, because he's downsized, these feet, well the legs rather, are, are positioned quite close together. Going to take the little Piranacon's head, which is now in yellow, with some red motifs on it, which actually looks pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to take the arms, which is to have round pegs. I'm just going to fit snugly into there, like that. These red arms from Jawbreaker can fit down to these little holes just down there on on, on Tentacle, but I'm not going to do that because I actually prefer having them there. I'm just going to put that in there. Just open these out slightly. I can't remember if it will. On this one, no, it won't. 
which is a shame. Right, anyway, so he goes on. I don't like pushing him in too far because a bloody knockoff. Anyway, so there we go. With this gun, this one can go into this centre hole here and point downwards, just in case someone wants to run up to him so he can shoot you. Uh, right, now then what we do with uh, C-Wing, we take him at the back here with that tab, with the massive hole on his back, we now can just fit him, if you can fit him on. I can't remember exactly what I'm supposed to do with these bloody legs. Uh, I suppose you can move these out slightly. He definitely will fit just in there, as you can see. Uh, and let me come up these back. Oh, yeah, there we go. So anyway, so that's what we do with C-Wing on the back. And then there is your combined Piranacon, which, if I'm honest, he don't look too bad. And well worth the $25, which ended up being about 18 quid, 17 quid. Uh, that I paid for it, and um, I'm pretty damn pleased with it. And because I wanted a kind of generation two, I know I could have technically used the the TFCC version, but I could never bother to buy it if I'm honest with you. Um, I was thinking of doing that, but just never got around to it. Anyway, let's do a quick size comparison with the original Seacons. Let me just move this back slightly. And as you can see, let me just adjust my camera ever so slightly. The magic of Blue Tank is doing wonders today. There we go. And so you get a nice little size comparison there. Let me just move them a bit closer. There we go. As you can see, he's not really that much different in height now at all. He is a little bit smaller, obviously. But he still looks impressive to me. Um, I don't mind telling you. I'm actually really, really pleased with it. This guy does lurch forward for some reason. It's bloody dodgy G1 though, isn't it? Um, right, this has been Graham, the Collector 75. I hope you enjoyed this review of uh, some different knockoff figures. Um, yeah. Bye for now.